Justice Investigative Team has held a press conference to present the evidence gathered from the 18-month investigation on the rape allegations against Yaya Jame by Fatima Tatuva Jalo. International criminal and so-called dictator hunter Reed Brody, who is also the founder of Bringing Jame to Justice, described the systematic process and position Jame used to sexually violate the rights of young girls. There was a highly developed system involving the resources of the presidency and the state to facilitate Jame's sexual abuse of women. Some women were put on the state payroll at State House as so-called protocol girls. Jame gave these women cash and gifts and promised them scholarships and other privileges if they had sex with him. Marian Volkman, the lead researcher and coordinator of Jame to Justice Group, outlined the scope of the 18 months investigation and success registered through gathering of media reports. After identifying 50 alleged victims, only 15 spoke in a group, which consists of five women. The men include former NIA operatives, protocols, and four of Jamie's former bodyguards, who, according to Marion, gave testimonies highlighting a clear picture of Jamie's systematic web of victims. So you would come across like this father figure, this, this mentor, talking about women empowerment, how women should not get married too early. Um, yet, talking about women empowerment, he would still give them a lot of gifts. And what is very important in the African context, also give gifts or support to the families of these women, knowing exactly that it puts a little bit more pressure on the women. The Jamit Justice spokesperson, Fatimata Sanding, said the organization is working with its Ghanaian counterparts to achieve a common goal. She also disclosed for the first time, and to the shock of many, how she luckily escaped Jamis' plot to sexually abuse her. He said, you can go tomorrow, but she brought a, a packet of money and said, the president said I should give you this, but also that if you don't tell anyone, he is not telling anyone that he gave you this. So you keep it. And then when you go, we will call you that you come back. Well, I escaped rape, like I said. It was just not supposed to be that day. The room sunk into silence as Fatima Tatufa Jala narrated her ordeal in trying to realize her dream of acquiring a scholarship by being crowned queen of the July 22nd beauty contest, only to face her worst nightmare of sexual abuse and violation from former President Jami, a man he previously considered a father figure. Tufa said it all started by multiple forced informal visits coordinated by Jimbe Jame, a protocol at State House who showered gifts on her. And finally, in 2015, a day before Ramadan, Jame forced himself on the 18 year old Tufa Jalo. I was fighting back and pulling my hands and pulling my feet, pushing him off. He would hold my dress and pull it back forward. He did what he had to do. He put me on my stomach. My legs were dangling on the floor, and when I screamed that I was dying, he said to me, no, it's fun. I walked out of there broken, changed for life. The guard looked at me and told me he is the president and we will do anything to protect him. As she embarks on the long journey to bring Jami to court, Tufa believes that there is a social consequence for victims of rape who speak up that makes the backlash more traumatizing than the actual experience of rape. Thank <laughs> you.